our Rome said, we threw the body <coughs> in the fire and out came this cat. I don't think that they were happy. Parasha Kakisa, Kakisa, can a man see God? This means when you count. But the question that's asked for Rabbi Resnick is, can a man see God? After Adonai sealed his covenant with Israel in Mount Sinai, he called Moshe and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel to ascend the mountain. There they saw the God of Israel. Indeed, not only did these men see God, but even the Torah, the Torah even describes the appearance of the pavement under God's feet. In the sight of Adonai, the elders ate and drank, probably to celebrate the covenant that had just been sealed. And apparently the leaders of Israel did indeed see God. Later, however, when Moshe asked Adonai to show him his glory, he replies, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. Rabban, says the rabbi, says this, this does not mean that a man would see him but then would immediately die. It means that before a man could grasp the sight of God, his soul would leave him for even of the vision of the angels it is written, and he quotes Daniel chapter 10 and verse 16. But Daniel says as a result of the vision, anguish has come upon me and I have retained no strength. If a vision of angels causes such anguish to the prophet, a vision of God himself would kill a man. Rambon says the death does not come later as a consequence of the vision, but is brought on by the vision itself. The sight of God, he says, would drive the soul out of a man. The New Covenant scriptures agree and again from John's Gospel, that first chapter that has so much to say, no man has seen God at any time, writes John. So then what did Moshe and the elders and all of those who survived that experience see? The question grows more complex as we consider a statement out of nine later makes to Miriam and our Rome when they challenge the authority of their brother Moshe. I don't know, I oppose Moshe saying, I speak with him face to face, and even plainly and not in dark sayings, and he sees the face of Adonai. Rabbi Resnick says Moshe sees God, but he does not see. He encounters God face to face, but he cannot see, he cannot comprehend God's face. No matter how much of God a man might see, God remains infinitely beyond his, your, my seeing. Clearly, Moshe senses this paradox. In the Parsha, shortly before, after he ascended Mount Sinai with the 70 elders and saw the God of Israel, he asked God to show him his glory. The elders may have been satisfied with their vision of God, but Moshe, who sees face to face, knows that he has not really seen God. The man of vision knows that his vision <coughs> is inadequate, and he says, please show me your glory. God responds, behold, there's a place near me. You may stand upon a rock, as my glory passes by, I shall place you in a cleft of the rock and shield you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I shall remove my hand and you shall see my back, but my face may not be seen. Torah teaches us two lessons, says the rabbi. First, when God grants Moshe his request, he'll go beyond visual revelation verbal revelation. The visual impact will be very minimal. 
Instead, Adonai will proclaim his name. Adonai, Adonai El Rakum, God, compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in chesed therein, grace and truth, showing grace to the thousandth generation, bearing iniquity, transgression, and sin, not clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. Moshe desires to see God's glory. Instead, he hears God's name, a description of his character that later would become known as the 13 attributes of mercy. We might expect Adonai to grant Moses' request in an overwhelming display of power, light, and majesty. Instead, to the one who's already seen more than any other prophet, he gives a verbal statement of his faithfulness and his compassion. And from that point on, knowledge of God continues to increase. There's a second lesson, says Rabbi Resnick, that although no human can see him and live, the God of Israel finds a way to make himself more fully known. Scripture is not so much the story of humanity's discovery, God, as it is of God's progressive self-revelation to man. He is not a God who hides himself without cause, who plays cat and mouse with man, but a God who seeks to bridge the gap between himself and humankind. He may not readily be seen in our world, indeed, says the rabbi, we could not survive a vision of him and his essence, but he does speak to us. And he intensified those 13 attributes by sending Mashiach for the purpose of embodying those attributes. Again, from John's Gospel, the Torah was given through Mashiach. Chesed, Vehemet, Grace, and Truth came through Yeshua HaMashiach. No one has ever seen God, but the one and unique God, Son who is identical with him and is at the Father's side, he has made him known. For us, the question, can a human being see God? Never in his essence, but we can hear him. The God who seeks to make himself known has spoken and continues to speak in Torah and in the living Torah, that is Yeshua of Shia.